Hello! So welcome to my very first Photoshop tutorial. Woo! What you're looking at is the final product of this tutorial. And what it is is just a vintage tint on a picture. Um, I decided to do these things because I've had so many people ask me on Tumblr, on Twitter, and on Facebook how to get the effect I get on my pictures. So I decided it'd be cool, you know, it's not makeup, but it'd be cool to show you guys how I manage this effect on Photoshop. And I know a lot of you do have Photoshop, but you might not know your way around it or um, you really don't have a reason to use it, maybe. But there are free trials of the CS5 version, which I'm using, available at adobe.com. Um, you can download it for 30 days and, like, complete entire thing. It's not like it knocks you off, like, a couple functions, but you can use the entire program for 30 days free of charge. I just want to show you around really quick for those of you who are not familiar with Photoshop. Now this is your tool palette and basically every single tool that you'll need will be right here. And if this isn't displaying on yours, all you do is go to window and make sure that the tools is checked off. Now right here, this is the most important panel in the entire Photoshop dialog. And basically what this is is whenever you do anything, when you add an adjustment to your picture, it will show up here. And right here, these things will be crucial when you're editing it. So this is what I refer to a yin and yang because um, it kind of looks like it. And these are adjustment layers. You don't have to worry about what that means, but it will be very easy for you to edit your pictures using these right here. So this is why I'm introducing these to you. That's all you really need for this tutorial. It's very, very, very basic, but it gives you incredible results. I hope you enjoyed the tutorial and I'll talk to you later. I am using a Mac right now, but Photoshop does not like differentiate between operating systems. So um, just the dialog will look different once you open it, like let's say when you press open the picture. That will obviously not look like that in Windows, but you know, you know how to search for pictures and how to browse for pictures like when you're uploading to Facebook. So that's what you're going to do. So we are going to go to the levels dialog. And what you're going to do is this little yin and yang thing looking here. You're going to click on that and you're going to scroll down until you find the levels. Once that opens up like this. If you're not familiar with photography and with how it works, Basically, there is always going to be a true black and a true white in each picture. Like, for example, the true black will be somewhere in here, these shadows right here, and the true white would be somewhere in my shirt or maybe in my shorts, which I made, by the way, and I'm very excited to show them. These three arrows right here represent something different. This arrow right here is the exposure, and what it does is it just heightens the white in the picture. This arrow right here is for lightness and and for darkness so if you bring it over to the left it will get brighter and if you bring it over to the right it will get increasingly darker and this little arrow is for the contrast you boost it over to the right increasingly more contrast so I'm gonna go ahead and just tweak this to match what I want it to look like <laughs> There is really no golden rule of how to do this. Like, I can't just tell you, oh yeah, just shift it over two, two notches and you'll be all set. Like, if you have a very dark picture, you're going to need to work harder at it. Um, but this picture, you know, it was taken with a DSLR. It has pretty good color balance. I don't really have to do much to it. But what I'm trying to say is there there is no golden rule. It's more like a trial We are going to start to give it that vintage feel to it. And what you're going to do is, you're going to go down to the yin and yang. Click on that and go down to where it says curves. Now curves is just another way to brighten and add contrast to your picture. Like for example, if you click right in the middle here and you drag it up, it gets brighter. And if you drag it down, it gets darker. But that's not what we're going to use this for. We're actually going to use this to change the color temperature of the picture. Click where it says RGB, which is red, green, and blue, and click on the red. 
you are supposed to be looking at a straight line, this straight line right here. And what we're going to do is we're going to shape this kind of like an S. So you're going to come up here, click on it, and bring it up. Then we're going to click right in the middle of the line and bring it down like that. Now we're going to click on the red and go to the green. Once, do the same thing. And feel free to, you know, adjust accordingly to how you want it because, you know, to each his own. That's what's great about photography and Photoshop that you can do whatever you want with it, honestly. So, this looks good to me for this picture. This works. So after that, we're all set. Now we're going to add something else to make it look more vintage. We're going to go down to the yin and yang again and select solid color. Now once we're here, we're going to look for a color that resembles hot pink. Like that. That's a good color. Up here, these will be your new favorite options. Basically, these are called blending modes. And what it does is it just allows you to be more creative with your pictures. Like for example, for this tutorial, we are going to set this to screen. And if you see, it gives it this really cool pink tint to it. But we're going to decrease the opacity, which is just how strong it is, by clicking the arrow down and then moving the slider over to the left. So that looks about right. As you can see, this is the before, this is the after. Now we're going to add yet another vintage tint to it. We're going to go over to the yin and yang again solid color but this time we're gonna look for an orangey color like that maybe a little bit light like that instead of setting it to screen we're going to set it to darken your picture should look somewhat like that we're going to toggle with the opacity again like that This is optional, it depends on how your picture is, but for this picture, to have much more contrast. So I'm going to duplicate the layer, clicking on the picture layer, and dragging it to where it has this little page flippy thing, right next to the trash. And that just duplicated my layer. And now I'm going to desaturate this, which means put it black and white. You're going to go up to Image, Adjustment, and Desaturate like that. Now I'm going to set this to soft light like that. And if you can't tell what that did, behold, before and after. It just gives it more depth to the picture. Now this is the final look and I hope you've enjoyed this tutorial.